So we'll say, uh, you how many guys you, you, you've heard say, I want my woman to be a hoe at home, but a lady in the streets, a freak in the bed, a freak in the sheets, and, mm-hmm. but a lady out in the streets. And, you know, at the end of the day, when we talk about being a lady or, or when we get involved in relationships, we talk about being a real man. For most of us, 90 percent of us, even higher, maybe even higher than that. We, we're talking about a stereotype. And that stereotype to me and you unwind and, and, and allow yourself to be your real self. That means most of the time you out in the world, you're not your real self. You're a presentation, a projection. Right. I want to. Um, I- but wait, hold it. Write it down. We have a caller and we got to take a quick break. Caller, stay on the line. I'm coming back to you after this break. Vagina bar. Hey, what's up? Welcome to another installment of Truth Pace with James Hanna. How y'all doing? Oh, let's see. Uh, Something going on on Truth Pace where I got, just as always, ever since I started it, always some woman that wants to come on and brag about having bomb-ass pussy. It's just something, I don't know what that is, why you feel the need to come on a public social network and brag in front of people who don't know you that you have bomb ass pussy. This needs to be said, ladies, uh, bomb ass pussy is like class. If you say it, you ain't got it. Okay. Uh, your life is supposed to reflect that you have bomb ass pussy. It's things supposed to be going on. Uh, first of all, this needs to be said, bomb ass pussy always has a man. Okay. If you ain't had a man since the 10th grade, and you're 39 years old, no, your, your pussy's not the bomb, okay? Uh, and don't, if some dudes will tell women they have bomb-ass pussies, and y'all believe that. Don't believe every dude, okay? It's what he does, not what he says, okay? Because what he says, it may be some mitigating circumstances of him telling you that your eye pussy is the bomb, okay? Uh, like, the dude could be living with you and don't want to move out and move back in with his mama, so he's going to tell you that shit, just to stay stay in your house, okay? Uh, dude might tell you that because, you know, he sells drugs and he don't want you to testify against him one day. So that's why he might tell you that you got some bomb-ass pussy. But bomb-ass pussy, again, always has a man, okay? And I mean a dude that is out there, okay? And not just a man. Okay, ladies, if you have bomb-ass pussy, this is the thing about your man. If you ain't doing nothing to change his life, your pussy ain't shit. OK, um, if you meet a dude and he's a beat cop and then five years later, he's still a beat cop. Your pussy ain't nothing. See, bomb ass pussy works like this. It either distracts or inspires a man to do something. His life bomb ass pussy is life changing. Ask Erica Badu because everybody she fuck ain't never the same after they fuck. Her, OK, that's bomb pussy. OK, if your man was a beat cop and then five years later, he's the chief of police. You got some bomb pussy, okay? Or five years later, he's going down on a bribery charge because he was trying to buy you a nice diamond necklace or something. Yeah, that's see, that's what bomb pussy does. It motivates men to do right or wrong, okay? That's what it does. If your man is still the same nigga five years later, your pussy ain't nothing, okay? And I don't mean, and it ain't nothing wrong with having I ate pussy, okay? Let me make let me make that clear. All the women who know, you know, it's it's the problem is is the women who brag about it. It's like no, you got we got this. Sh- Y'all got, ladies, y'all need to start policing these bitches because they're fucking up the ecology for everybody, okay? Um, another sign is if your bills are being paid by a dude, you got some bomb-ass pussy, okay? I don't care if, if you make $90,000 a year, that nigga makes $27,000 a year, he gonna try to pay a couple of bills just to keep just to keep you around, okay? That's how men work, Okay? Um, if your hair and nails ain't never done, but you keep fucking the same dude, you, you got some horrible pussy. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, dude's going to make sure that your hair, nails, and even your cell phone bill is paid, okay? Because he ain't going to have you without a cell phone, so he can't keep in touch with his pussy, okay? If your phone is always getting cut off, but this and somehow this nigga is emailing you booty calls, yeah, your pussy is nothing, okay? Um and this needs to be said, like, like I said, it's just it's something going on where it's just these women, y'all are, at, what? I just wonder, when did pussy need advertising? 
Big Mama didn't advertise pussy. Hey, you just—I mean, you know—I mean, and y'all, you got here, okay? Big Mama was married fifty years. That's how you know she has some bomb ass pussy, but she didn't advertise it. It's the fact that your grandfather came home every day to let the world know that you got some bomb ass pussy, okay? If your man works around the corner and this nigga takes two hours to get home, your pussy ain't shit, okay? And that's all I got to say about that. I mean, really, it's just, y'all got to stop with this madness. This uh, I got the bomb pussy, the snapper, and all that stuff. It's just let a man find out you got the bomb pussy and the snapper on his own. All right. Anyway, that's it for Truth Pace. That needed to be said. And if you like what I had to say. Man, comment, rest in peace yeah. to my brother, James <laughs> Hanna. Okay. I really appreciated that clip, man. I miss mm. that brother, man. He, wow. he used to call me all the time. We talk about topics and, mm. you know, st- man, we need to get this show. Did we, 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 I'm calling in and, you know, wow. I just, uh, man, I know he's still around energetically, spiritually, but he brought up some great stuff. And he was in, in, in a comedic context, but in a spiritual context, I believe mother material matter manifest. All of these words are connected, etymologically speaking. With that said, if you're not building and creating something with your men, and women have the power to do that simply by believing in a man, simply by investing emotionally, spiritually, she makes him more of what he already is, right? This this is a more esoteric uh, definition of what... Uh, behind uh, behind the statement of behind every good man, there's a good woman or behind every great man, there's a great woman, because there's something about her belief and her energy and her passion and and what she's putting into him that helps him reach or hit the mark or, you know, kind of aims him at the mark. That's what good, powerful women do. And if a woman and we know the stats out there, most women are not having deep for real cervical, you know, orgasms like busting off, really getting it. And I think if they're not getting it, they're not at their most powerful creative space. Uh, Veronica? Yes, Yes, that is absolutely true. Uh, To kind of what James said, I mean, if you got a bomb-ass pussy, you'll have a harem of alpha males lined up around the corner. That's true. Because that's the truth. It is. Right. But we've so lost sight of, of, of what that is. And it, it's, as you said, Joe, it's a, this is spiritual because, because we were given the act of sexuality, yin and yang, as, as, a, as a conduit, as a way to feed each other. If, in other words, if we as men and women were, were correctly using sexuality Wait, for its true intent Veronica. and its true purpose. Yeah. Veronica. You just said something that just sparked something in me. Are you telling me that the lady all of these women are aspiring to be is the social construct, but the goddess slash queen is the spiritual aspect? And what happens, in my opinion, is that most women Mm -hmm. are in pursuit of the lady, quote unquote, at the expense Yes. of the spiritual. So there's yes. like, there's an in, an imbalance in the development of both of those, right? Is that what you're saying? Correct. Hmm. Absolutely. Because if we knew what we were capable of as queens and as godmen, just given the sexual act, if we knew how to use that to create dynasties and nations, and then we would be uncontrollable. Wow. And so these institutions have given us the, 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 um, the energy of guilt and shame hmm. to stop us and division to stop us from realizing that hmm. because if we were to actually be in yin and yang and we were to be activating each other spiritually and sexually and climbing that sexual staircase to God, we wouldn't need all of these industries and institutions that have popped Ooh. up that we support with our fear. Ooh. We support the church and the wedding industrial complex and all that stuff with our fear. It, we feed it with our fear, but if we were to throw all of that off, and stop tolerating that substandard, I mean, wifey, really? That's what we aspire to? No. Mm. No. We, we're meant to, we are, we are a creative magnetic force. And, but, but we, again, we have to throw off all the guilt and all the shame, and our brothers need to support us in doing that. Wow. Brandy? 
Brandy doesn't seem to agree. No, no, I'm not disagreeing. I know, I, I just would, like to say that. I know. If you have everybody <laughs> out here thinking that I'm an angry, contrary bitch, I'm actually you, really you mellow. You are a contrarian here. No, Thank no, you. I just... I, 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 okay, tell us I what speak. your contrarian point is No, what is I now. was going to say to you um, in regard to what we were speaking about before the break, uh-huh. um, you, you're talking about the lady in the streets freaking the cheese, that sort of thing. And I, I think that I agree with what you say about one of them being more of a social construct and the other one being spiritual. But I don't think that one has to negate the other one. Neither do I. I think they right. have to work in concert. Right. Yeah. I think I mean, I think that just because you may aspire to be a lady, um, I don't think that that necessarily means that you absolutely must um, sacrifice you know, your sexuality, your, your inner goddess. Let me ask you, how do you tap in? How do you check in with your spirit, with your intuition, with the goddess queen side of you? That's for you too, Whitney. You mean in in regards to just period, like what is your process that keeps you tethered to the knowledge and the consciousness and awareness that you're more spirit than you are a social being running around trying to get the next dude? Well, you know, I mean, it's it's easy to get caught up in the social aspect of it all, but I think at some point, I, for me personally, I just have to, especially when things get a little bit crazy and a little bit, I have to just take, I have to remove myself from the energy mm-hmm. of everything else that's around. I'm very sensitive to energies that are around me, and if I'm in a place where there's all these crazy energies, a lot of times I have to separate myself from that Mm -hmm. because I need to to do that in order to be able to hear my own Mm. energy to connect with my own energy and I I spend a lot of time alone you know kind Mm. of reflecting on Mm -hmm. where I am you know simply can and it it, it takes an effort and that usually happens the most when I kind of isolate and really sort of get inside of myself and what what's going on with Whitney meets I same thing i basically turn off my cell phone i basically music music is my like everything so i just don't even talk to anybody like my what you listen to the go-go's or the something like that when, see she don't even know that is. what are you listening to i mean <laughs> just whatever i'm feeling at the time sometimes it's some shy day maybe it's some two chains i really don't know it's just I know i'm saying like music is my you know zen kind of a thing and i'll just so so stop talking to everybody and that's it I- I would say that if a woman were having two-hour orgasms on the regular, she would know that she was a goddess. There would be no question. Hmm. Because that's because when she when you because it literally an orgasm is literally it's the kundalini energy. It literally is the act of bringing all of that life force up through her up from her from her pelvis to her crown and out into the universe. And so if she is constantly in the act of palpating that and raising that up and allowing that to be free, then she knows she's a goddess. There's no question anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Do you think women uh, in in our society have lost sight, like have lost the connection? Yeah. Yeah. In what way can a woman make it back to a point of authenticity to the point where like, for instance, you don't have to think I'm a lady. Like, I don't see Erica Badu campaigning like I'm a lady, right? I just mm-hmm. think she magnetizes people into her space. Well, how is it that women have lost that ability? Like, could could you go into that a little? I, I would just say it's fear and shame. You know, you've had a brother on this show before, Zoe, a good friend of mine, Nichama. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, Nichama.com, and he does... You know, he goes where angels dare not tread uh, in the sense that he goes in and works with women and helps break them down. And see, here's the thing. I mean, we can talk about orgasms, but we have to actually talk about what prevents women from being orgasmic. And what and is that? A lot of times when, when women um, see what there, there's an actual life force, there's an actual spirit, there's actually your soul that begins to arise, right? And we, but it's all covered up with all of this fear and shame and guilt and doubt and should and conditioning and programming, the beauty industrial complex, it's all covered up with all of that gunk, that lead encasement around the heart that I spoke about a few shows back. If we, and so what a lot of times a woman has to climb through all of that Mm. so that she can be orgasmic. In other words, she has to relive that fear and shame and guilt that actually has to kind of come up in her awareness again and burn it off and it has to get burned off Mm -hmm. in the act of lovemaking. And so 
the, the thing that stops her from being orgasmic and walking around as like a goddess is all of the things that have been programmed and deposited into her from men, from the dominant culture, from advertising in the media. She's got to go back and begin to fake, square off with that all that pain. And so we, so women have to face the pain because it's their pain that stands in the way from them and their goddess nature mm. and their orgasm. Mm. So that, that goes back to my point earlier about the lady construct being right. a lie. And what happens is we get all of these demands. Okay. We talked, we talked uh, before on many different shows about the difference between demanding and commanding. Right. When you're demanding, that means you don't have it. Black people in America demand justice. We demand rights. We demand uh, equality. Right. That's because we don't have it. When you're in a position of demanding, typically you don't have. Right. So Mm -hmm. when you're commanding, you're not asking. It's just coming because you're magnetizing it from an internal space. So follow where I'm going here. If women are demanding chivalry, right, Mm -hmm. that means they're Mm -hmm. not commanding it from an internal space, right? If it becomes a social construct or this is how you're supposed to behave, it's just a behavioral ritual that doesn't really have any meaning to the man who's doing it other than by doing it, I impress her to get the ass, and then, right, because a, a woman who's frigid can't command reverence. A woman who is frigid <laughs> cannot command reverence, which is what a man will be if, if she's commanding. A woman who is frigid cannot command reverence. And now, reverence is related to the word revere and reverend. And respect. All of these share the same Mm -hmm. root. So a a woman who is frigid in a way can't get the respect of a man. That's 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 pretty heavy. And this is why the vagina bar is so just getting by with what you got. Just like Corey said, you just want to fuck with right now. (laughs) Wait till I get some bread. I'm up out of here. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that's heavy, man. Three two three nine six five sixteen hundred, ladies. I agree. Everything Veronica said. The past two years, you're gonna have, have to disagree with something. Look, it, re- shit. not with Veron- <laughs> Veronica's on point. You guys made me some of the stuff y'all are saying. I'm gonna be <laughs> some of the shit you talking about. <laughs> I'm saying, but no, like for the past two years, I have been single on purpose because I'm trying to find myself because I went through a lot of stuff. I'm trying to, you know, rebuild myself before I open up to that. I guess, man, but maybe I'm doing it the wrong way, but I don't, I'm not going around sleeping with a bunch of people be, because it's not, it's not, it's not fulfilling. You know what, I mean? you know ah, what I'm saying? It's not it's fulfilling. Not, Go deeper. It, it, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> like it, it's not, it, it's doing nothing for me. How it's often me do down. women just fuck somebody because that real nature on the spirit side says, I just need good dicking. And then after you get it, you get ridiculed by that inner critic that's in alignment with society's rules. And then you have this bad feeling later. Like, damn, I shouldn't damn have right. did that. How is he going to look at me? How is he going to view me? How often does that happen for most women? 323-965-1600. We got a caller on the line. Caller, holler at me. 